talk. Thank you also for the introductions. Uh, this project pro cover was done by um, myself and my colleagues at the Media Interaction Lab in Austria and also in collaboration with Google. So pro cover is an approach, a smart textile approach to augmenting prosthetic limbs with a sense of feeling. And the first question you might have is, what are the kind of prosthetic limbs that are being used by amputees today? Well, to give you an idea, here are a couple of snapshots of uh, the legs that people that we worked with use. And you can immediately see that they vary in size, shape, components. And also, these legs can be very expensive, actually. So they can cost easily from 5000 to upwards of 50,000 US dollars. And despite all the options that are available today, none of them give users the ability to feel. So what are researchers doing about this? Well, actually, there has been a movement towards creating electronic skin. And just last year, there was some very exciting work released by researchers at Stanford University. And they created a thin film circuit that can convert pressure information into electrical impulses that could theoretically be interpreted by the brain. However, the challenge with such an approach is that it will likely take some time to come to market and would also likely be expensive. And this can be troublesome for those who rely on prostheses today. So our vision is to introduce a sensing wearable, one that a user can simply take and slip over their prosthetic limb themselves to give it a sense of feeling. So here's some snapshots of our prototyping process. And you can see that it involved sewing a couple of layers of socks and also creating soft to hard connections that would hook the sock up to a custom measurement hardware board. So if you want to know more technical details about this, please refer to our flex tiles demo, which happened earlier this year at Kai. So the result was this. Here's a prosthetic leg. It's wearing the pro cover sock. And you can see that it's detecting different types of touches I'm applying to the foot. It consists of three layers. So two layers of conductive zebra fabric, which you can see here, sandwiching a layer of piezo resistive fabric. And this comes together to create a sock that also offers all over sensing. The sock forwards information to the hardware board and it can detect both location and pressure of the different touches. We use this information to drive a vibration uh, feedback armband, and this band can actually also be worn on different parts of the body, so not restricted to the upper arm, but can also be worn, for example, on the upper leg. So after we prototyped this, we really wanted to understand how best to design the system for amputees. And we had the fortune of working with a local support group for amputees called Leben mit Amputation. And what we did is we issued them a questionnaire. So we ideally wanted to discover three different things. First, we wanted to understand the acceptability of a textile form factor. So for instance, how would the system be integrated into their user routines? Secondly, we wanted to know the implications for having all over sensing. And previous work in this area mostly put force sensitive resistors on only the sole of the foot. And lastly, we wanted to understand what factors could influence their sensing needs. So we worked with a diverse group of amputees, so eight different participants, both male and female. Their ages ranged from 37 to upwards of 70 years of age. They had different types of amputation, and we make the distinction at the knee. So four of them had an above knee amputation, the other four had a below knee amputation, and actually one individual had a double below knee amputation. They used their prostheses for a different amount of time. So one individual had used his leg only for three months, and another had used his legs for over 50 years. We also asked them for their mobility grade. And for those of you that aren't familiar with this, this is a form of classification that's typically given to an amputee, and it describes what type of prosthetic would best suit their lifestyle. So for someone with a K1 classification, they would mostly be traversing level surfaces. 
And someone with K4 would be very athletic, and they'd put a lot of stress on their leg. So first we looked at acceptability, and we simply asked people to state whether they thought that this technology would help them to perform their activities better in their daily lives. And the responses were very encouraging. So most of them felt that, yes, it would help them in their day-to-day -day activities. We also wanted to know, do people wear socks regularly over their prosthetic feet? And of our participants, most of them did. Lastly, we asked them about the types of shoes that they wore. And what we found was that running shoes were by far the most popular option. And typically, they had a preference for shoes that could be affixed tightly to their feet. So we then asked our participants to perform a coloring activity. And this was to address the fact that we have all of our sensing with the sock. So you can see here both light gray and dark gray. The light gray indicates that people felt this area of the foot is important to have sensing. And dark gray corresponds with an idea of it being very important. And immediately what you can notice here is that everyone had a different idea about what sensing they needed on their foot. So we could break down their responses by their amputation type. And this revealed something very interesting. So above knee amputees had a desire that was restricted mostly to the front and towards the back of their foot, whereas below knee amputees had a much more diverse range of answers. And this kind of revealed the fact that for those who have an artificial knee, they're very concerned about stability. And these sensing desires match this concept. We then asked for what kind of activities do they do? And actually, our participants did a wide range of activities. So things such as walking up and down the stairs, but also, for example, wheelchair basketball and bike riding. And again, if we try to assess their sensing responses based off of their activities, we can find some very interesting sensing maps. So for example, someone who would walk would like to have sensing on all over their foot. And this matches the fact that they want to avoid accidentally tripping on objects, for example. For biking, people sensing desires were restricted to the toes and the ball of the foot. And this makes sense because they want to be able to sense that their foot is in firm contact with the pedal. And also, interestingly enough, uh, they mentioned this idea of crouching. And in this case, they wanted to have sensing on the front and towards the back of their foot. And again, this would help with stability and understanding how they're shifting their weight. So as the last part of the questionnaire, we asked people to simply share their personal experiences. And actually, they mentioned a number of things which we had anticipated. So for example, they wanted to avoid tripping. They wanted to feel more stable when walking. We also anticipated that pressure was important. And indeed, some people talked about driving and how they wanted to be able to sense how much pressure they're applying to the pedal. But one thing we didn't anticipate was that one participant wanted to know the bend state of his leg. And this is because he actually had a low-end prosthetic that had a simple hinge mechanism at the knee. So if he were to accidentally shift his weight towards that side when his leg was even slightly bent, that would put him at risk of injury and falling. So what were the key takeaways from this pre-study? Well, we learned that a lot of people used many different legs, but also we learned that they had diverse sensing needs. On top of that, we learned that the bend state of the leg could indeed be quite important. So what we decided to do was to introduce new features into our system. One focuses on customization to address these diverse needs. And secondly, we looked into the utility of the fabric to detect the bend state in prosthetic joints. So for our further developments, we created a sensor feedback mapping tool. So instead of having a static mapping between the sensor and the vibration motors, we now give power to the user. The user can apply pressure to a part of the sock to create a new sensing region, and then they can use a mobile app to select motors that should vibrate in correspondence to this region. And I'd like to show a snippet of this in action. So here I'm selecting a region on the foot, and we're selecting motors, and now you can see when I apply pressure to that area, those motors are vibrating. 
so in this example, you can see we mapped both the front and the back of the foot. We also looked into bend detection. So we made a number of iterations for this knee guard. And you can see our final iteration managed to identify three different bend states. So no bends, slight bends, and high bend. And again, I'll show it to you in action. So here is a prosthetic leg. I'm bending it, and it's detecting the different states. So after all of this work, the big question was, does this really work on real prostheses? What we decided to do is conduct a pilot study. So we invited four of our previous eight participants to return to the lab, and we asked them to try out our prototype. So this was divided into three different tasks. The first was a touch discrimination task. And what we did is we had users don the vibration armband as well as the sock. And we asked them to identify whether we were applying pressure to the ball or the heel of the foot. And this was mostly a feasibility study for us. We wanted to know if the sock could be applied successfully to different types of prostheses, and also whether users can really get a sense of what they're feeling based off of the vibration feedback. <coughs> so the results of task one were encouraging, because we did indeed manage to apply the sock to the different prostheses and dynamically create sensing regions on each one. And what we found was that without the sock, they had a 75% error rate, and with the sock, they had no errors. And for those of you who might be asking about the 75% error rate, we suspect that people had some confusion in how they were interpreting the pressure on their stump as we apply pressure, and I think that that's because of the way we raised the prosthetic leg on the stool. The second task was a pressure discrimination task. And here, we gave users a set of gas pedals, and we asked them to press it to three different degrees. So not at all, moderately, or fully. And what we wanted to observe here is whether they could perform this task more accurately with our system. So for this task, we found that people were actually very proficient at it. They had a low error rate of 11.1%, but with our SOC, it did offer a slight improvement. And the most interesting observation from this task was actually how prosthesis users interact with the gas pedals. So unlike most of us, I think, where we rest our heel on the ground, they actually hover their leg over the pedals. <coughs> and this meant, sorry, <coughs> this meant that the area that comes in contact with the pedals actually changes. There's a slight variance. And as a design concept in the future, we would like to ensure that people then select perhaps a larger area to account for this variance. The last task was a bend detection task. And here's actually an earlier version of the knee guard. Here we strapped it over their prosthetic joint, and we observed how well the system could identify the, state, the bend state of their leg. So we asked users to bend their leg to either not at all, slightly, or fully. And two of our participants in the pilot study were above knee amputees, and the system performed fairly well with them. So six out of nine for the first, and eight out of nine for the second. And actually, the key takeaway from this was that the fit of the knee guard is very important. So in this case, it's quite loose, and that introduced noise to the signal. And in our later iterations, what we found is that when we made this tighter, the accuracy was improved. So as future work, there are actually three things that we'd like to do with this. First, we'd like to improve the textile sensor. So increase the resolution and also move towards a single layer approach as opposed to the three that I showed you today. For feedback, there's actually so many different approaches to give people feedback. So we want to look at different types of actuators and perhaps even different modalities, for example, visual or audio feedback. And also for the study, it would be interesting to do this with many more participants to gain more quantitative data. We'd also like to do longer term studies to have a better idea of how it works over time. So overall, what have we learned? Well, we learned that the legs today don't offer any sensory capabilities, but amputees would greatly appreciate this feature. We also learned that while their legs are very diverse, their sensing needs are also very diverse. And ultimately, 
we see potential for using smart fabrics to address these needs in the here and now. So that concludes my talk. Thank you very much for your attention, and I open the floor to any questions you might have. So have you looked at, um, instead of going down to single layers, have you looked at putting this across multiple layers of clothes? So for example, the sock has one component, but then the outerwear might have another component, and then combining the sensing just with the natural layering of fabrics that people already wear. Yeah, so we actually considered different places to put the fabric. So for example, outside of the shoe versus inside of the shoe. And one of our main considerations were how they fit into people's routines. And as these users already wear socks regularly, mm -hmm. that was a motivation for us to take this kind of approach. But it would definitely be interesting to really study the differences between like outerwear versus innerwear for the sensor. Okay, thank you. So if we have any other questions, we have one in the corner. Hi, uh, Aza Abu Zaid, New York University, Abu Dhabi. Um, I was wondering how people f felt about sort of um, getting sensory feedback over a prolonged time, so sort of walking and feeling constant, say, pressure through uh, a vibration motor or actuator. Did that um, make them feel less comfortable with the sock or not? So in our particular studies, we didn't actually look at this effect over the long term. It was a short pilot study, but from what I understand in previous work, people have considered, for example, turning off the motors at some point. So if I'm wearing the sock and I'm just standing still, then I don't want constant vibration for my whole presentation. Um, so in that case, we also factored a, a timeout into our system. But I cannot really elaborate on how they felt with the vibration feedback over a long duration. Thank you.